Hello, Jen here. Um, this is take two of my February scrappy chat mental health moment. Uh, being vulnerable is kind of hard for me. It's not uh, something that I am very comfortable with. So I filmed a whole big video and then I second guessed myself and now I'm filming it again. <laughs> so um, I think it's, whoops. I'm knocking things over. I think it's gonna take a little bit of time for me to really find my comfort zone with these videos, but that's okay, it's important, and I really do want to um, check in on you guys and see how you're doing and and talk, let's talk. Um, so I also uh, had filmed several videos in January and didn't post any of them. Um, but we'll get there, we'll get there. I'm gaining confidence and, and we'll get there. I really did want to post a video uh, on Bell Let's Talk Day. I thought that that was really important to do. Um, and I just, it kind of emotionally drained me a little bit. Um, January was not a great month. Um, nothing super crazy happened to me personally. Uh, but um, we had some not great news from a loved one. Um, we had my husband's grandma pass away. Um, things, things happened. It was a heavy month uh, and it kind of drained me quite a bit. So I didn't post those videos, but I think as I get a little bit more comfortable with myself, It'll come, it, it'll come, I need to practice. I need to learn that it's okay to be vulnerable. So um, that is a journey that I am taking with you guys and uh, thank you for being here to, to take that journey with me. Um, so I think on the scrapbooking end of things, January went pretty well. My goal was to every week have at least one video out, and so I was able to get that done. Um, so I'm gonna call that a success. I didn't get any extras. Um, you know, I didn't do any of the celebration hops that I was hoping that I would do, and I didn't get any of the extra series that I hoped that I would be able to get, but I got those four videos, and so I'm gonna call January a success. I feel good about that and I can only go up from there. Um, so that's what you do, right? You wake up and you tell yourself today you're gonna just do your best and you're gonna go. That's actually my word for 2022. My one little word is go. Um, go forward, go sideways, sometimes you may even go backwards, but just keep going. Just wake up every morning and, and do something, do your best, go. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So for February, I'm just gonna set the goal for myself of doing the four videos and one extra thing. Maybe I'll get a bunch of extra things in, but if I can just get that one extra thing in, I think that that's great. I think that it's it's that one little improvement over the month before. I don't plan to do that every month where now suddenly I wanna get two extra things and then three extra things in. But I do always wanna give myself just that little extra incentive and say, you know, you can do it, challenge yourself, you enjoy this, so go ahead and do it. Um, I did get a lot of things done off camera in January though that I'm really proud of myself for. I got my 2020 album started. I got my 2021 album started. I've been editing lots of pictures and getting them all printed out. So I feel really good about all of the stuff that I did even though you guys may not actually see it all. Um, and so just adding that one extra little challenge I think that's that's good. I'm not going to push myself too too hard. So um, February will be a good month, I think. There is still a lot of stuff going on, uh, but we're learning to cope with things, and we're taking it one day at a time, one step at a time. That's all you can do, and so uh, we'll just keep going, keep going. So for February's mental health moment, um, I think we're going to talk about relationships because. Valentine's Day, so why not talk about them? 
uh, relationships aren't easy. And I don't just mean romantic relationships, but all relationships, whether they're family, friends, our children, coworkers, whatever it might be, they all have an impact on our mental health and how we are able to adjust and cope with things, um, you know, having different supports that are positive healthy supports versus people that are maybe tearing us down and not healthy i think relationships are a really big topic uh, and it's something that we struggle with um, a lot of people that i know are people pleasers just like me and so relationships are not easy because our brains and our hearts don't always match um, and we know in our brain that a certain relationship is not good it makes us feel like crap and yet our heart compels us to continue with that relationship and say yes to everything and put extra expectations on ourselves and um, just you know be that person and uh that's that's not good that's not healthy it's definitely something that i have been striving to kind of work towards having the confidence to say no um and having the confidence to be okay with whatever their reaction is because i'm 40 years old so it's been 40 years of people expecting me to say yes expecting me to show up expecting me to do all the things and do it with a smile let's be honest most people pleasers we smile through it. So um, it's not easy to get people's reactions to you saying no and not take them personally. So that is my uh, little kind of journey when it comes to relationships is finding boundaries and, and being clear about my boundaries not kind of reneging on my boundaries um, finding the Goldilocks spot for boundaries where um, I don't think you should always go against your heart but you do need to be be sure that you're protecting yourself and um, so finding that Goldilocks spot where you say yes just enough to kind of give your heart what it needs but you're saying no enough that you aren't completely draining yourself and being you know miserable or being taken advantage of so uh let me know if that's a struggle for you guys because i know it is for a lot of people i feel like crafters there's a lot of crafters that are kind of like that i don't know what it is about us that we're drawn to the crafting um industry and we're maybe a little bit more kind of artistic in mind um and and we are people pleasers <laughs> so uh so I just kind of wanted to share that that is definitely something that I struggle with when it comes to relationships. Um, I also think my ADHD is a bit of a hindrance when it comes to relationships because I don't have sort of a linear thought process and so talking to me can be a little bit weird. My brain is like firing all the time and I'm getting all these little ideas and sometimes I can hold it together and I can have a very cohesive conversation but most of the time I can't and so I go off on tangents and I say that a lot in my voiceovers too and I and I've made a point of saying it because I want people to understand that I'm not being flighty or anything like that that my brain just goes off on tangents and so when i write things down if i want to do this video for example i've written some notes down so if my brain starts to go off on that tangent have my little notes i can look down i can say okay off on a tangent but let's get back to this point here um and it kind of keeps me a little bit more focused it uh it doesn't always work but for the most part I can kind of you know carry on these videos I didn't have notes when I was doing my videos that were in the car they were kind of like oh I have you know 15 minutes I don't have the kids yet they're not here yet it's quiet popped on my my phone started recording and then blah, 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 just blurted stuff out and um, while that is very true to who I am I don't know if I was quite ready to show the entire world, the YouTube world, who that person is. Um, 
but in real life when I'm meeting people in real life that's that's who I am I do go off on a lot of tangents a lot of you know run on sentences a lot of ideas that I start and as I'm talking and talking and talking I can't remember what we were originally talking about um, and there are a lot of people who are like that too. It uh, It isn't necessarily that you have ADHD, but for me it definitely is. So it, uh, it can be hard for a lot of people who don't want to follow that pathway. Um, it can be hard for a lot of people who also have ADHD to people having an ADHD conversation can be a little crazy sometimes. Um, it, uh, you know, some people just think I'm dumb. <laughs> I don't know what other word to use. Some people just think, you know, she's so, she's, she's flighty. She's an airhead. She's dumb. Um, and that's not at all the case. Uh, it, uh, it definitely is just that my brain is working so much faster than my mouth can spit things out. And so I'm trying to get all this information into the conversation and it takes me on all these different pathways um but because i am old enough to be aware of that and you know i see it in my son in my 10 year old he's not quite old enough to be aware that he does that and so it doesn't seem to inhibit him as much as it does me or even kaylin she's almost 17 um and i definitely know you know she's Partly she can kind of play it off like, oh, I'm just a teen girl and I can, you know, this is who I am. Um, and it works for teen girls for a certain window of time, um, but it won't work forever. And she's getting to that point where she's sort of recognizing it. And I definitely do at my age. I know that most people don't want to sit down and have this weird convoluted, you know, two minute story that turns into a 45 minute story conversation with somebody. Um, so I think I pull back a little bit, uh, in relationships before I've even really given them a chance as well. I'm my own worst saboteur, I guess. And, and a lot of us are that's what we do right that inner voice in our head tells us no people aren't gonna like you you shouldn't be doing this you're doing it all wrong and so you sabotage the relationship before you've given it given it a chance um i also feel like one symptom that i have of adhd is um i don't have a sense of time it's really hard to explain to people if they don't also have this symptom um, and I think other there are other mental health um, issues that can cause similar things um, but essentially I know what time is and I know what a minute feels like and I know how to count a minute I know what an hour is um, from a cognitive point of view I know all of this information but I don't feel the the process of time if that makes sense and so I can start to hyper focus on something and lose track of time and where some people might lose you know 20 minutes half an hour I can lose six hours um, and not feel like that has passed um, I kind of have that moment of like a weekend is can be a really long hard like the month of January for example it was a long month it was a hard month and yet I can't believe it's over and I know people do say that quite often but I don't have the physical kind of memory of the passing of time for the month of January um, which means that I can be late to things quite a bit if if I don't set reminders for myself if I don't have my phone constantly going off reminding me you know you have an hour until this thing okay now you have half an hour okay now you have 15 minutes you need to leave in 10 minutes like I have to set all of those reminders for myself um, 
I also can leave messages unanswered for a really long time and in my head I will think to myself oh I'll just get get to that in you know one second or in an hour when I have some free time I'll answer that and then suddenly two weeks go by and someone will say hey you didn't message me back and it's like wait two weeks what happened um, so I just I lose time I guess I my brain doesn't process it the same way I don't um, feel that two weeks has gone by uh, and so that can make people think again that I'm not organized that I don't care that I'm aloof or you know an airhead or whatever I've been called all kinds of things like that um, the one that hurts the most is when people say I don't care, which is really not the truth. I'm not doing this intentionally and I have a lot of things put in place to help me not do these things. Uh, but we live in a society that is very uh, structured and we live in a society that holds a high um, regard for, you know, being on time, being prompt, doing things right away. We're, we're kind of that instant gratification society. And so people who aren't like that are often considered to be lazy or uncaring or ignorant or dumb or all these things. Um, and not all of us are. Some of us are maybe, but um, a lot of us have, have struggles in that area. Uh, and so that definitely has an impact on all kinds of relationships, not just, you know, friends. That one pops to mind first because, um, you know, friends don't, don't want to be left on read in text messages or on Facebook or whatever. Um, but, you know, relationships with professionals in your life, your doctors, your, you know, lawyers, people that your accountant and stuff like that who get to know you over time and if you're showing up late to things or you you're showing up kind of rushed for things or whatever, um, you know, that builds an impression on them of who you are. Um, teachers. <laughs> I laugh because I just, the relationships that I have built with my kids' teachers are just crazy sometimes. I'm definitely that parent that teachers are like, ugh, I have to send her a reminder or whatever it is. Um, and I feel horrible that that's who I am. And I do my very best not to be that person. And when I do slip up, sometimes it's, you know, it's a big failure for me, I feel like, and I have a lot of guilt over that. Um, but there is a point when I just sort of have to accept that this is who I am. And um, so now I tell people, I let people know, this is who I am. I'm not disorganized. I have multiple planners. I know months and months in advance, uh, you know, what's going on. Appointments, I have it in my phone. I have it everywhere. It's not about that. And it really isn't about them it isn't about you it's about me i struggle with this and i have to make sure that i always have those right coping mechanisms so um yeah adhd can really kind of mess around with relationships and can make it really hard and i think that some of those more neurodivergent people uh we have different expectations for relationships and that sort of neurodivergent part of me really appreciates friends who can be honest and blunt and say exactly what they mean so i don't have to try to you know make assumptions or jump to conclusions or read between the lines i can do all of that stuff um but i always have that fear that i'm not reading the right things between those lines or whatever it might be and I, I second guess myself and that kind of stuff. So I definitely appreciate all of that. Um, emotionally, I think I'm much more the people pleaser side of things. So sometimes being blunt <laughs> takes me by surprise and uh, I take things too personally. Um, definitely something I'm also working on. So it's kind of a fun little game that I'm playing always to balance all of these things in my relationships. But um, yeah, there you go. So uh, 
those are all things I'm working on this year and talking to people and these videos I think are a good start to talking about these things and so I wanted to share a little bit of that with you guys and let you know kind of um, some of the struggles that I have when it comes to to finding friends and finding healthy relationships and even you know with family members that don't don't always understand where you're coming from or that kind of thing so um i'm hoping that i will actually film and post a few more videos and just let you know how things are going uh, i can't really share too much about what has been going on in january but possibly i can a little bit later on and so hopefully i can give you a bit of an update on that and I'm really hoping to have a little more positive uh, positivity and good things happening this month. Um, so let me know how you guys are doing. Thank you so much for all of your comments on the other video. Oh, I was in tears reading them all. I just, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was amazing and I hope that we can keep talking and keep you know, going through these, these journeys and this process together. So, um, please don't hesitate to comment down below. Let me know, you know, if you have tips or tricks for healthy relationships, maybe some struggles that you have, whatever it is you want to talk about. Even if you just want to say hi, pop it down there below. I am here to chat and, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully I haven't rambled too much. Um, and we will see you again soon. Remember to also check out Daisy's videos. She is so much better at this than I am, but, uh, I'll get there. I promise I'll keep working at it and I'll get there. So until next time, we'll talk to you later.